Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India
getting uh, removed. Of course, uh, beta uh, depends on Mach number, but soon we can see that as uh, uh, the Mach numbers increase really uh, large, uh, then even uh, beta becomes somewhat independent of uh, uh, Mach number. Okay. So, uh, so what we see really here is that uh, uh, we are getting uh, uh, quantities which are becoming independent explicit dependence of Mach number is getting removed. Okay. Uh, so, always uh, we are interested in finding out what is the pressure uh, distribution over uh, bodies. So, we want to know what is pressure coefficient and pressure coefficient is determined as P 2 minus P 1, uh, P 1 can be P infinity um, which is uh, the free stream conditions uh, by half rho uh, u 1 square v 1 square equal to. Uh, so, we can make this, this is uh, this should now be a standard transformation uh, from half rho u square to 2 by gamma m 1 square. Uh, you can do this by taking p 1 out and then multiplying and dividing by gamma uh, p 2 by p 1 minus 1. So, in this equation we can apply uh, p 2 by p 1 uh, that we uh, just obtained um, from the previous uh, considerations. Then we get the, uh, the equation 4 by gamma plus 1 sin square beta minus 1 by m square m square going to large values this becomes 4 by gamma plus 1 uh, sin square beta. So, again you can see that for coefficient of pressure uh, also becomes um, explicit dependence on Mach number is removed here, but further if we uh, consider uh, the m theta beta relations for uh, oblique shocks written here tan theta is equal to 2 beta m 1 square sin uh, square beta minus 1 divided by m 1 square gamma plus cos 2 beta plus 2. So, this expression if you consider this and uh, consider that we are having a hypersonic body uh, a body in hypersonic flow uh, in the limit of large Mach numbers also that it is a slender body. Uh, when we say slender body the angles of the body are uh, small. So, theta is small. So, if theta is small we know uh, as a consequent beta will also be small therefore, uh, we can make these approximations sin beta is approximately equal to beta cos 2 beta goes as 1 uh, tan theta and sin theta both approximate as uh, theta. And if you put uh, those approximations into this equation you get uh, uh, this particular uh, result here and then combine it uh, with the fact that a Mach number is going to very high values m 1 tends to infinity we get beta by theta is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 or if you put gamma as 1.4 this becomes beta is 1.2 theta that means beta is hardly um, 20 percent uh, 20 percent greater than uh, um, theta. So, this is uh, very much uh, consistent with what we had discussed uh, about uh, thin shock layer. So, what we find here is that uh, beta should be very close to uh, theta. Uh, so, uh, even uh, if you look at this final uh, discussion over here at high Mach numbers beta also becomes uh, independent of uh, Mach number explicit dependence is not there. Okay, so, what happens as a uh, consequence of this? So, as a consequence of this we find that in hypersonic flows uh, certain uh, uh, theories that were developed very early on uh, even by uh, Isaac Newton uh, they are impact based uh, theories for forces over bodies in uh, fluid flow uh, where uh, 
Newton considered that uh, that if you have a stream of uh, fluid uh, coming in velocity with the velocity u infinity uh, okay, and it impacts a body uh, let us take a flat plate uh, kept at an angle um, theta uh, then um, the uh, flow is suddenly turning to uh, become tangential to this uh, particular stream uh, or particular wall and uh, therefore, if we do a control volume analysis around this body uh, assuming that all the uh, velocity normal to this uh, or rather all the velocity just gets goes along uh, the tangential direction uh, and uh, uh, the normal velocity just gets cancelled off if we do uh, such a calculation. Uh, then we can find out what is C p and the C p is then 2 uh, sin square uh, theta. Uh, this was the expression that was given by uh, Newton very long time ago, uh, but uh, this did not con consider details of fluid flow and uh, now uh, mm, we know uh, we are able in a position to plot the stream lines and find out what are the pressures. Uh, around such bodies, uh, but in hypersonic flow uh, uh, for uh, many reasons including the fact that uh, the shocks they are very close to the body. So, if you consider what happens over here uh, on a thin wedge placed in hypersonic flow. Uh, the hypersonic uh, flow velocity u infinity goes across the shock and immediately it becomes tangential uh, to the body and this uh, thin shock is occurring very close to the body. Uh, therefore, uh, we approach uh, the assumptions that were initially taken by Newton uh, quite some time ago. Therefore, uh, we expect that C p equal to 2 sin square theta uh, will be a good approximation for um, uh, the uh, uh, bodies in hypersonic flow. In fact, we can do it more uh, rigorously also uh, in uh, supersonic flow small perturbation theory we saw C p is 2 theta by square root of m infinity square minus 1. Uh, which simply stated that uh, C p depends on local surface inclination. The uh, Newtonian uh, theory also states that C p depends only on the uh, surface inclination. Uh, in the hypersonic limit if we take a look at uh, C p we find that it is actually um, depending on uh, sin square beta which we have just now uh, done. And we also saw that at uh, large Mach numbers beta uh, approaches uh, theta it is very close to uh, theta. Uh, explicitly, explicitly if we take um, the limit that uh, gamma goes to 1 then uh, beta will be equal to theta and uh, 4 by gamma plus 1 will become equal to 2. So, um, even if we consider a thin shock layer we are able to see that whatever uh, Newtonian uh, was uh, Newton was predicting uh, in hypersonic flows in the limit of large Mach numbers we are very close to it. So, Newtonian uh, methods to estimate uh, quickly estimate the um, uh, aerodynamic forces is used uh, effectively in uh, hypersonic uh, flows. Uh, it is an estimate uh, to start with and uh, later uh, more refined theories can be used. Mm. Uh, for example, if you consider a flat plate at an angle of attack alpha uh, then uh, we can find uh, what is the um, force on this plate. Uh, the uh, region behind the flow that is the shadow region uh, this is shadow region 
uh, that has uh, zero pressure that is what is uh, taken uh, the or rather cp is very low it can be considered as zero while um, only uh, cp is considered for the windward facing uh, flow where the impact takes place uh, where at this uh, lower half it is 2 sin square alpha uh, therefore uh, the normal uh, coefficient of uh, force can be uh, easily calculated it is nothing but integration of uh, the difference in pressures mm, over the chord ok. So, it becomes uh, uh, C n becomes 2 sin square alpha. Uh, now, lift and drag can be calculated they are components of uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, normal force. Uh, the lift is uh, C n cos alpha drag is C n sin alpha therefore, you get uh, lift and drag of uh, this kind. Finally, L by D ratio is also can be found it goes as uh, cot alpha. So, these are the uh, plots of uh, uh, C L C D and uh, L by D uh, for uh, uh, the vehicle. So, now uh, uh, if uh, it is completely placed at 90 degree then all the force is just uh, drag and uh, uh, we get um, C D uh, and that case should be 2.0 which is what is uh, coming over here ok. Uh, so, it comes out to be 2.0 while uh, C L gradually decreases uh, down to um, 0 while L by D occurs at a maximum at an in between in between point over here ok. So, uh, uh, you can apply these uh, Newtonian methods. Uh, later uh, uh, there was uh, corrections done to the Newtonian uh, it was from approximate methods. So, uh, the correction was that uh, there is a stagnation pressure that occurs at uh, any body. So, uh, the reference pressure or reference uh, uh, Cp can be taken uh, to be the uh, stagnation pressure here. Uh, at the nose which is C p max therefore, C p is written as C p max by uh, sin square theta. So, um, uh, this is plotted C p max can be found out uh, from normal shock uh, relations because at the stagnation point it is uh, a normal shock and uh, therefore, uh, if one plots using uh, Newtonian methods uh, straight Newtonian without any modification is the uh, upper curve mm, while the modified Newtonian is much much closer to more exact evaluations using uh, numerical techniques of a flow over certain shape body. So, uh, modified Newtonian gives a uh, improved uh, estimate of the coefficient of uh, uh, pressure. Uh, so, uh, with these uh, discussions what uh, one must uh, understand is uh, while the physical flow features uh, in uh, hypersonic flow become quite uh, uh, complex uh, very fact of uh, high Mach numbers allows certain uh, simplicity and uh, to be done and surface inclination methods like Newtonian are quite useful in estimating the uh, coefficient of um, pressure. So, this uh, is a fact that uh, we have been uh, while discussing the oblique shock relations also we have noted uh, that um, if we non dimensionalize the um, uh, variables appropriately uh, like coefficient of pressure C L C D or rho 2 by rho 1 or P 2 appropriately non dimensionalized by rho infinity square uh, they all uh, become uh, independent of uh, Mach number. So, P 2 bar uh, here it is represented as P 2 bar is a normalized uh, pressure. Similarly, um, rho 2 bar is uh, normalized uh, density u 2 bar and P 2 bar are 
normalized velocities we find that as uh, the uh, Mach numbers go to large values uh, normalized uh, uh, pressures densities and velocities uh, they uh, become independent of Mach number this is known as Mach number independence principle. So, uh, from this we have a, an idea that in hypersonic uh, limit uh, Mach number really does not play a uh, major uh, role. Uh, so, uh, the flow becomes uh, uh, somewhat independent of uh, Mach number. So, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the hypersonic uh, flows a brief introduction that has been done over here. Uh, we have uh, considered uh, a, an introduction into physical aspects of uh, hypersonic flows. Uh, then uh, uh, there we discuss the complexities that arises like high temperature effects, thick boundary layers and so on, um, uh, thin shock layers. Uh, and uh, as a result of say thin shock layers, high Mach numbers, uh, certain simplifications are uh, possible uh, in uh, the analysis of hypersonic flows. Uh, first estimates of say aerodynamic coefficients uh, can be uh, uh, evaluated based on simple uh, local surface inclination theory like Newtonian theory or modified Newtonian theory. If we apply the limit of uh, high uh, Mach numbers to uh, oblique shock relations in hypersonic flows, we see uh, that a certain uh, independence of Mach number is achieved in uh, normalized uh, values. Uh, so, um, with this we the uh, area of hypersonic flows itself is quite vast involving uh, various aspects related to um, heat transfer effects, viscous effects and uh, high temperature effects and so on. Uh, which is difficult to cover in such a short time. Uh, so, but uh, this um, uh, short uh, lectures were to give an introduction to this topic, uh, so that if anyone is interested they can further uh, pursue them. With this we close on uh, hypersonic flows, but we look at some other interesting aspects related to uh, shock interactions and shock wave boundary layer interactions in the coming classes. Okay. Thank you.